Oh, hello. It's me, Mrs. P. You know, I recently had two warthogs visiting me from Germany. Oh, they were wonderful house guests. And they were so happy to spend time here that what they did, because they were architectural warthogs from Stuttgart, they, along with all the other guests and animals who stay here with me, built me a special media room. Yes, that's where I am now. I am in the hub of my house, the special media room. Mm -hmm. You know, usually I read all my stories from my magic library, but the warthogs told me that I was a little behind the times, that everything is about social media and video and just making movies. So they built me this beautiful media room. And so today, in honor of that and in honor of the winner of my seventh annual Be a Famous Writer contest, I'm going to read their winning story for you right here in my new media room. Yes. Now, it's very important to know that the winner of the contest was Ms. McInnes's third grade class. Yes, and they're from Maine, Brewer, Maine. And they wrote a fantastic story called Classroom Pets. And so I'm going to read it to you right now. Classroom Pets. Mrs. McInnes closed the newly released book by Dr. Seuss lovingly and smiled at her students. Fifty years ago, Dr. Seuss wrote this book, and in 2015, it was published, shared Mrs. McInnes. She continued, close your eyes. I want everyone to imagine the type of pet you would choose if you were the little boy or his sister, Kay. After a minute of everyone having their eyes closed, Mrs. McInnes whispered, everyone, slowly open your eyes, and we will share the type of pet that you choose. Well, as she opened her eyes, a look of surprise spread across her face because sitting in front of her were a classroom of animals. Oh, a dog was sitting on the floor barking. A snake was slithering towards Mrs. McGinnis's foot, hissing as if to say, hello. Monkeys were swinging from one light fixture to the other. Chickens were running around the room, stopping periodically to lay an egg. But not an ordinary egg, just a large pink egg with purple stripes. Cheetahs, the fastest land mammals on earth, were running back and forth across the room so quickly. Well, they looked like blurs. Elephants with long trunks wearing camo were stomping their feet and making the room shake as if there was an earthquake. A gorilla stood on the desk, pounding its chest as it howled to let everyone know it was the boss of the jungle. Ah! In an instant, all the animals froze and glanced at the gorilla, wondering what all the ruckus was about. Well, the first thing they noticed was that the gorilla was wearing a black and white striped dress. Hmm. First clue. The gorilla is a girl. Then they noticed... It was a gorilla with short blonde hair. Hmm. Clue number two. Now, as the gorilla looked around the room, she laughed. Ho, 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 Clue number three. Putting all the clues together with the fact that the gorilla seemed to think she was in charge. Well, the animals quickly realized it was their teacher, Mrs. McGinnis. Mrs. McInnes looked around the classroom of animals and roared, Something went terribly wrong! We've got to figure out how to correct this, or your parents will be very angry when you get off the bus this afternoon. Arr! Who has an idea for a solution? Oh, I've got an idea, yelled a prickly puffer fish who had gone unnoticed in the classroom sink. Next time, raise your fin instead of calling out, reminded Mrs. McInnes. Now, what is your idea? Well, I think we should call 911 and ask for help, burbled the fish. This is a good idea, but I don't think the police will believe us. They're going to think we're a prank call. So who else has an idea? Asked our teacher, the gorilla. The cheetah, who had a strong interest in chemistry, raised her paw. She happened to have a book from the school library titled Quick 
and easy potions for the classroom. Well, she opened the book to page 3,253 and read the following directions to the animals. To turn an animal into a human, mix the following ingredients. Five cups of pencil shavings, one shredded math workbook, two cups of liquid glue, and 500 teaspoons of green marker ink, and a handful of magnets. Stir 100 strokes, then gently place one foot in the bowl for 30 minutes as you chant the words Bingo Boo three times. After the potion was mixed, and all of the animals put one foot, fin, hoof, wing, or paw into the mixture and repeated the magic words, bingo boo, bingo boo, bingo boo. Well, the animals looked around the room at each other and waited. One minute, 30 minutes, one hour, nothing happened. Well, that didn't work, murmured Mrs. McGinnis. Who has another idea? Well, the chicken raised a wing, the elephant raised a trunk, the snake raised its forked tongue, the dog raised a paw, the monkey raised its hand, the cheetah raised its large paw, and all together they shouted, let's do what got us into this mess in the first place. Imagine that we are ourselves. So they did, and it worked, just as the bell to end the school day rang. Mrs. McGinnis continued to read Dr. Seuss's book, What Pet Should I Get?, to her class, but she never, ever again asked them to close their eyes and imagine what pet they would get. The end. <laughs> well, that's a great story, isn't it? Yes. The winner of my seventh annual Be a Famous Writer contest. Goodbye.